right, I'm back again. We're starting again. I'm so sorry, everybody who tuned in earlier. Um, and I'm going to try to add Shannon now. So I just sent her a request to join me. And we'll see what happens. <gasps> there she Yay! is. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, I've never felt so old than trying to figure this out. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Yay. No, that's okay. That's okay. So now oh good. I think everybody who was there came in. Now we just gotta get it so our faces are in the Yeah. Okay. It's hard when it's a kind of a square screen. You know what? Uh, I'll just hunch because then we've got okay, we'll just you know what? This is great. I got this. Okay. So this will work. So again, Hey, thank you everybody for joining me for this week of Lisa's Leftovers. I have a super exciting guest this week, Shannon from, and I can never, Urban Farm Foods. Yeah, Urban so, Farm Foods. Urban Farm Foods. So we are going to chat a little bit later after we have our Dutch babies in the oven, and we'll talk a little bit more about what she does. But let's get started and get these babies going. Okay, awesome. So the first thing we'll need is a blender. That is my top secret ingredient for the Dutch baby or food processor works fine too. If you hand mix it, it takes a little longer. You're all right, you've got the muscle. That's perfectly great. So I'm gonna do the, the cheat way. This is good, we're showing two different methods. I'm into this. Okay. Exactly, this is what so, it's all about. Okay. So into our, whatever mixing station we're doing. Okay. We are, we are going to mix our ingredients but the first thing we need to do actually do you have your oven preheated to yes. 425 awesome I do we are going to let's see we're going to take our pan and we're going to put okay. our pan in the oven while we mix our ingredients firstly Perfect. so put your pan in the middle like center rack done all right Awesome. And that gets it nice and hot. It actually cuts the cooking time down and makes that really poofy middle part. So that's exciting. So okay. into our blender, we're going to put, let's see here, do, 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 uh, three quarters cup milk. Got that. Okay. All right. A half a cup of flour. That's what I forgot. She ah. did give me a list of ingredients. So this is... This is all me not being prepared. No, it's totally good. You know what? This is like normal cooking in the kitchen. It's no big. It's great. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that was way more. Okay. Let's say that's a half cup. Okay. Yeah, that was me I adding vodka yesterday to my pie crust and I wasn't measuring it and I went a little went a little overboard with the vodka and the pie crust. <laughs> well, I will say when you when you have homegrown eggs we both do so right. um right now i will say i actually am using eggs from a company called egg drop in portland they are supplying me with eggs because my girls are all molting i think yours are kind of in the same boat right now so um i'm getting two eggs a day from 16. yeah we have about a dozen and i'm getting like two eggs a day from my little guys so um <laughs> When your eggs are homegrown, sometimes they can be bigger or smaller than store-bought. So you might have to add a little bit more flour if you're not at like a, a paste consistency. So we've got okay. our flour in, got our milk in. Now we're going to do three room temperature eggs, three large eggs. Those are three eggs. Some of my girls have the hardest shells, and these are no different. Good calcium. Oh, that, that's a great sign. All right. Cool. And then we're also going to add a half teaspoon of salt. Kosher salt is my preference. Okay and two tablespoons of sugar. If you're not using sugar or you're cutting sugar out of your diet, you can omit this, but I feel like it gives it that like Hawaiian sweet bread flavor to it. So I like it. Okay. Even in a savory, it's good to have a little sweet. Two tablespoons, you said? Two tablespoons, yes. Okay. And then I'm gonna give this a buzz while you're doing the mix and then we'll okay. see what it looks like. 
loud noise. Kind of want it like a really loose milkshake, basically. That's what mine is like a thin pancake batter. Exactly. Yeah. Like okay. Plaster paste. You know. Okay. 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 Now that that's all mixed up, we are going to in our pan that should be preheating in the oven. We are going to put three tablespoons of butter into the pan while it's heating. The butter's gonna okay. melt and get nice and bubbly. We're watching for some fully melted, starting to bubble butter in your pan. That's when we dump in the batter. So let's do this part first. Okay. Very nice. Okay. And we have a couple minutes while the butter bubbles. So we could take questions now if we wanted to. Yes, we can absolutely take questions. I actually have a question. I would like to know what a culinary horticulturalist is. So I kind of invented it. Maybe it's something somebody else calls themselves too. But um, I, I started with gardening and went into cooking and it kind of was very seamless. And then I started teaching people how to food garden. So I called it culinary horticulture because you're growing food gardens. So you're doing like edible landscaping or okay. like patio gardens on a pot with pots and things for folks that have no yard per se. So it's like how to grow food in small spaces is kind of my wheelhouse for teaching people how to be more sustainable. I love that. We actually just got a couple of questions. We are making a Dutch Ooh. baby. Sorry about that. In my first attempt when I couldn't get Shannon added, mm -hmm. I talked about how she's going to teach me how to make a Dutch baby, a savory Dutch baby. I've made sweet oven pancake mm -hmm. type things that are very similar. I do melt the butter in the oven and all that, but I've never made a savory one. So I'm excited. So yes, we're making a savory Dutch baby. Yeah. And the savory part is what you add on top of it. I will say in sweet Dutch babies, you can add more sugar to the batter or vanilla mm -hmm. is typical. Um, I right. like the vanilla because I feel like it conflicts with some other flavors you might want to add to a savory one. So, yeah. Right. I agree. Cool. All right. I'm going to check oh, them out. I'm bubbling. Let's see. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm bubbling too. Okay. Okay. Let me out to show. Oof. Ooh. All right. So it's nice and it's like brown butter, like the fastest way possible. Right, now, without a microwave, I love it. Yeah, okay. This lid's tricky. I don't want to explode this all over my kitchen. I've done it before. All right. What's that? The top of my blender oh. is finicky, so yeah. Oh, I, I thought just... you were adding something else. No, <laughs> all right. Pour our batter in. And toss this back into the oven for 18 to 20 minutes, depending on where you're at. 20 minutes is usually right around the, the perfect time. Okay. Are you setting a timer? Nah, I'm gonna wing it. <laughs> okay. 16, let me see, 14, so it would be about 3.30 something. Perfect. Whew. All right. I have a little friend who wanted to come and hang oh. out. <laughs> I kicked mine out of the kitchen. He was being so loud. I have, we have a black he, baby that wanted to be all in this mix, so. He didn't come down until after he was sleeping in the chair upstairs. And he didn't come down until he started hearing me in the kitchen. Plunking around. <clears throat> I think he thought it was dinner time, yeah. Oh. Um, okay, so we know what our horticultural is. And same with the food plant education. So you're teaching people to grow food. And not yeah. only to grow food, but then to eat what they're growing, which I think is, yeah. it's super important. I think that a lot of times you try to get people interested in gardening. And I know myself even, I would grow all kinds of things that I didn't even like to eat. You know, and I finally said, why am I growing green beans or, you know, peppers? Like, I don't like those things. So I'm just going to grow what I like to eat. 
Yeah, it, it just makes more sense. And I think it's something that's so intuitive, but a lot of people miss it. They just feel like they need to grow everything. Mm -hmm. And you really or don't. maybe they're scared to grow something that they saw in a recipe and they're like, oh, I don't know if that grows in my region or where would I even put that? Or what is a companion plant for that? There's lots of, lots of areas where I've, I have the luck that my grandma was an amazing gardener. I learned a lot of things from really small. So my trial and error is quite a bit in the past. So I can help people kind of shoot forward to success and do things like, um, like planting um, weird radishes or like daikon is one we did. I did a thing with teaching like root vegetable companion planting and things for like winter because people are like, mm -hmm. oh, well, now it's cold. I can't grow stuff. Well, you could grow peas in most places or root veggies or kale or a lot of stuff. It just depends where you're at and what you like to eat, but you can grow lots more than you think. That's kind of the thing. So where do you live? I'm uh, right outside Portland, Oregon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we, we, in Maine, we can't grow stuff in the winter. <laughs> although, although I do, Nikki Jabor, who lives in Nova Scotia, does grow year round. She has um, hoop houses and she has tunnels and she has cold frames and uses straw bales and she's super dedicated and she does grow carrots and you know, she's pulling carrots out of the ground in the winter. So it is and possible. They stay really nice in the ground too, and potatoes. And there's certain things that hay is a really good insulator, and it's super cheap. Just straw, actually mm -hmm. not hay. I'm gonna correct that because if you do seedless straw, you won't be growing a hay field. Because if you get a bale of hay <laughs> and you use it as a row cover, then you've got you're actually just growing hay because it's crazy. I did that myself. <laughs> that was a huge mistake I made one year. So, um, but yeah, there's straw cold frame is a huge thing or even just like an old window laid across um one of your raised beds works it's there's a lot yep. of weird hacks you can do where it's cold but yeah there's small window where you're at and we're i would say like in january we're not harvesting a whole heck of a lot but yeah it's, mm -hmm. we, we get the most out of it and have a couple months where we don't get to do much so yeah. right you have a longer season when we live in virginia we in the winter i could grow the kale and, and chards and brussels sprouts and a lot of my herbs were were year round and things like that so you definitely have an easier time of it um but here in maine we have such a long day in the summer that right. once it starts we only have like a hundred frost free days but once stuff starts growing it grows really quickly so i've grown sweet potatoes i've grown watermelons yeah. you know things that you would think you could grow in maine you just got to start them usually inside you know, give them a head start. And then um, once they start, you know, they just take off. So I, us too. I don't we know that I would have a lot of things inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just gotta, you gotta work with your timing and what you've got. And there was a lot of, um, what they call short season varieties, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I couldn't grow every pump, uh, watermelon variety, but if I pick a short, you know, growing, as long as it's like within that hundred days, I'm, I'm usually good. So. Yeah, there's a couple that are like icebox ones or like some of the little sugar babies that are pretty tiny that have like more of like a 90 day growing season where you're like, I'm almost there. You're almost ready. And it's end of season. It's it's fine right. for the melons. We have that problem here, too, where it's a short season for melons or bell peppers. That's one thing for us. that's kind of got a shorter season because it doesn't get all the way right. We have to do the little kinds. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would say think about what you like to eat, what you like to prepare, and then look into some varieties or how you could possibly grow it where you live. Yeah, that's awesome. I love teaching people about stuff. And I like learning a lot of things too. I follow a lot of people that are in different areas than me, because then maybe if somebody teaches me something about growing in Florida, maybe if I have a friend mm -hmm. in Florida that wants to know something, maybe that's something I can add to what I know. So then everybody right. can learn from somebody. So it's true and everybody has garden challenges because in yeah. virginia it was I, so i grew up in new england so i was used to planting around mother's day or memorial day and in virginia we had to get our seeds in in like february or by june and july everything's burning up you know so your peas yeah. and everything had to go in so early and i would miss it so many years because in february i'm not thinking about gardening so yeah. you know just yeah. but I, you can grow anywhere no matter where you live in this country you can grow something that's, that's guaranteed true. And no matter what size space you have too, because there's yep. there's apartment patios. If you've got a small space on an apartment terrace and it's south facing, you could do tons of cool stuff no matter where you're living. It just amount the amount of sunshine matters. Um, you right. can 
things. You could do things in hanging pots. There's, you can get really creative with it if you really want to do it. So it's kind of a fun thing, especially right now. There's a lot of folks that are inside with more time on their hands to do things around the house. So, yeah. No, that's true. And, and because, you know, you don't know about the food supply and you don't necessarily want to be running out to the store every day. I yeah. love the Tom Thumb. I do the Tom Thumb peas yeah. and the Tom Thumb lettuce. You know, the I lettuce heads are only like this. They're great for the chickens and ducks because they're just little oh. mini size. But yeah, I like the Tom Thumb varieties of, of the peas and the lettuce, um, and of course tomatoes. I mean, you can grow tomatoes in pots. You know, you yeah. can. I don't have any lettuce, but I've been growing basil. I grew it from seed, and it's just that. on a windowsill. A yeah, little basil inside, or even like microgreens too. That's another thing, like radish sprouts or kale sprouts. Mm -hmm. like, if you're feeling like you need to get your like nutrient fix, or you really like feel like you're missing that fresh flavor, and you don't feel like continuing to buy uh, sprouts are really expensive at the store too so growing those at home just in a shallow like disposable pie pan with a paper towel it's super easy and then it's kind of like a kitchen experiment you don't have to have a yard to do that kind of stuff so no yeah, that's, that's true and i grow again bringing it back to the chickens i grow sprouts and i also grow fodder for them in the winter i mean you can sprout almost anything seeds or beans or i'll sprout my leftover vegetable seeds a lot of times you know we've got some in the packet, like you said, radishes, or um, there's so much you can do and you don't need, you know, acres and acres of, of tilled garden. You just have to be creative. Yeah. Somebody just knows if you nice when, you're, when you're gardening and you have uh, chickens and things, if you have chickens and a garden, you have automatic rototillers. I put my girls to work right about this time of year. It's great. And then you have fertilizer, you have, um, little compost machines. It's pretty great. I love it. I, we, I just cleared out a bunch of, um, if folks grow zucchini, you know that if you give it like a three day window and you don't pick your zucchini, you right. with what we call the baby arm. It's like, it's really humongous and not tasty as much as the tender ones. I found ones that I didn't, I missed almost all season. I had dinosaur zucchini out there. So I just threw those to the girls and they were so excited because those seeds are good for them. Everything's good for them. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Chickens and gardening. I mean, my book, Gardening with Chickens, that's why I wrote it. But when you start doing both, you realize they eat bugs out of the garden. I've seen so many fewer garden pests and, and they do. They can clean up and they'll eat all the stalks and, you know, really get the soil ready. Plus, when I clean the coop out, I just throw all that straw either into my compost pile or like I just mulch my garlic bed with straw and poop and feathers from the chicken coop. So it's amazing. Um, I don't have a garden. We both get in there and look. <laughs> My chickens, oh, have have a garden. Garden. my chickens have a garden that's so true oh man anything mine can reach outside of their run is is game over so i make sure i can plant things that they can eat the greens and maybe whatever's on the vine is for me and they get the leaves they have their right. own patch too yeah oh i love that oh i'm watching my timer here how are we doing oh you know what we should go to toppings what did you have for toppings for your savory dutch baby today Okay, so you had mentioned like a BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato, avocado. I had almost none of that. So I have bacon. I did cook some bacon. Um, I have these cute little, they're canned, but they're little cherry tomatoes. Oh, cute. So I thought those might be cute. And then, of course, I have the basil and I have scallions. And that was about all that I could, oh, and ranch dressing. That was like about all I could scare up. I've got tomatoes i have some lovely farmer friends that um i get to scavenge the last of their tomatoes of the season since mine are done so i've got really the good tomatoes it's the last of the season for the good tomatoes i swear um let's see got my handy dandy knife so i switched it up because um i found some balsamic fig uh cheese goat cheese spread some borson and I've got bacon and tomatoes and some pickled red onions. I mean, why oh. not? I figure that might be kind of tasty. Fancy. So I'm going to chop up some tomatoes while we wait. Do, do, do. Oh, somebody said, are ducks also good for gardening? Ducks are. Ducks actually, um, they don't tend to scratch in the dirt like the chickens will. They'll dig up your seeds, but they like to rummage in the, in the dirt for um weed seeds for bug larva uh, and once your plants are growing i feel more comfortable letting the ducks into the garden than the chickens because the chickens will eat really? your plant like right down to the dirt whereas yeah. the ducks not so much you know they might nibble a little bit that's good to yeah. know i only 
we have chickens. I don't have ducks. I love you, ducks. You should have ducks because you get a lot of rain, don't you? Yeah, we get tons of rain. So I have a neighbor whose ducks every once in a while when we have a big storm. Um, one of the the drakes. That's a male duck, yeah? God, I should mm -hmm. know that. Okay, cool. Yeah, go me. Um, he got disoriented and flew over the fence into our yard and then walked up to me like, I don't think this is my house. I need to go home. So I tossed them over the fence. They're so sweet. I really like them. They are. Yeah, we enjoy our ducks a lot. I, I like the ducks. So do your ducks and your chickens get along? I feel like they do, don't they? Yeah, they live together. They've lived together for years. They, I don't think any woman care if the other disappeared forever and never <laughs> appear, you know, returned. They kind of stayed on their own, but um, yeah, they get along fine. See, I have really, um, I don't want to swear on your feed. Um, I have real um, bossy chickens that are, my golden girls don't put up with youngsters very well. So I can't imagine they would love having a duck. But. Yeah, all those production breeds can be mean. The, you know, I was worried at first when we had chickens and ducks because the ducks have rounded bills and, you know, they don't have spurs or anything. I was really worried about them, but my money is on the ducks. I They hold their own. I mean, they have no problem with the chickens. Yeah, they boss the chickens around. It's, it's pretty funny. Now, I don't remember. Do you have a rooster or you have only hens? We do. We have a little bantam rooster, so yeah, he doesn't really bother anybody. Yeah, he's, he's just a little guy. And I have a, I have a Drake also, um, who's really, really mellow. See, I think that's kind of the secret to it, too, because our rooster is a little banty. He's a little um, Pekin coaching ac accidental um, upbringing. We for sure thought he was going to be a hen until he crowed. Um, but yeah, he's like super docile, but uh, our neighbors have roosters that they like try to fight through the fence and our little guy is like, what is wrong? I just want to be a big friendly family. Doesn't get it. I yeah, I've tried. Real fast. Oh, I've gotten so many accidental roosters and I tried, I really tried to keep them, but they get so nasty and I just, I can't, you know, I can't have like a pet attacking us. <laughs> yeah. And we really only need one because we're in we're in a neighborhood and having a multiple we back up to farmland, but um, we live in a in a cul-de-sac with some folks don't enjoy the sounds of chickens. You know, if you have several roosters, it gets to be a problem. I don't really want to be that house, to be completely honest. So, right. But once I bring out the silkies, everybody's like, "Oh, it's fine. Never mind. We love your chickens. They look like puppets." <laughs> All right, I'm going to check on this Dutch baby. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, it's starting. I can smell it. All right. Oh, my goodness. Woo! Oh. Oh, I think oh, mine's done. Baby. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Oh, that's so good. Oh. That's crazy. It looks right. like a souffle. Look, I can't even get my souffles to ride this much. It's so cool. <laughs> Yours looks beautiful. You did a freaking you know, great job on that. Look at that crisp. I didn't even use a blender. Yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. They're so easy and so good. So here's the fun part. You okay. Can, you can dress it with some more butter if you love it to be extra buttery. Okay. You can put your toppings right on top. Um, I'm going to start loading mine up with cheese as the top layer so that it's all melty and gooey. Let's see. Of course, you didn't tell me cheese. All right, let me get some cheese. Oh, you entertain no everybody. Cheese. Nice. All right. So I will say this is my first ever live. So I'm I'm loving this because it feels like I'm cooking with my friends because I miss cooking with my friends so much. But this is really fun. Glad that we're doing this. I, I think it's fun. And, and while we're on that topic, if anybody else wants to come cook with me, just, um, you know, send me a DM or email me, uh, freshdaily.gmail.com, and you can come on and we can cook something. We can either cook something that I decide or, like, I asked Shannon, you know, what, what she kind of wanted to cook. Um, and she suggested the Dutch baby, which I was excited because I've never made one. Which is great because I basically went, mm, what do I want to eat that day? And then that was perfect. Right. And I just had I know, this could be dinner. And I just had my um, egg delivery, and I got eggs and my whole milk from my delivery service, which is awesome because then I didn't have to go anywhere for it. So perfect. Yeah. I know. I, I saw your list, and I was like, I don't feel like going out to get anything. I'll just 
see what I can find, but I did find, I have some Fontina cheese, so. Ooh, yum. Yeah, that'll okay. be good. So, where am I? Let me make sure you can see this. Cool. So I've got all my bacon. I'm gonna put that sprinkle in here. Did you just kind of like rough chop your bacon? Or is what? it in strip? Did you, you chopped your bacon a little bit? I cut it with scissors because I can be really lazy. Hmm. Okay. I'm still grating. I'm like kind of a little bouncy, so sometimes crumbling just makes a mess. So, okay. Oh. Ooh, I also have some curly mustard greens, some mescaline greens. These are so fun. They're like not quite as bitter as a mustard, but um, way prettier, actually. So put these guys on here. I never have any greens because I just feed them all to the ducks. So we My literally never, we never have salads. So I let the chickens go completely crazy town and clear out my lettuce bed. So I actually had to hit up one of my farmer friends and ask for extra greens. So I'm very spoiled where I live because I do have a lot of farms around us. Right. And farm food friends are seriously the best people to know. Awesome. Oh, absolutely. I know we had our whole garlic um, crop this year rotted. I was so upset. Oh, and no. I have friends, though, that had a good one. So they brought us over um, garlic and some onions, and I gave them some eggs, and it just all works out. Oh, I can't tell you. I've traded more pickles and eggs through this pandemic for other things I needed. Like, I've traded for honey and meat, and it's amazing. The nice. bartering trade is like... That's my favorite. It is. I definitely agree. But I have to say, I really like these little cherry tomatoes. I didn't realize when I bought them. I just thought it was, you know, like stewed tomatoes. And yeah. then I went this today when I was right in the pantry trying to figure out what, what I could put on this thing. I saw it said cherry tomatoes, and they're they're super cute. They're almost like like stewed oh, cherry cute. tomatoes. And they're whole. They don't look so um, cooked and reduced like a normal canned tomato. Yeah, no, they're, I know, they're, I'm liking them. I like that. Ooh. Now, you said you had ranch. I'm going to go rogue, and I'm going to do some balsamic glaze on mine. Oh, I want to do that, too, now. I actually have some balsamic. Oh. All right. There we go. Oh, oh I'm so excited. So, see if I can hold this without dropping it. So that's where we're at. Ooh. Oh my goodness. I love that. I love that this made like a little dish almost. Like there's sides. It's almost like a bowl that you're making your 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 whole meal in. And it's so good because it's it's pretty protein packed from your eggs and things, but then like realistically in my kitchen baking goes with everything. So baking oh, definitely baby Dutch baby too, so Let's see. I'm gonna oh, I hear my, my kiddo is getting wild in there. That's funny. Let's <laughs> see. I'm moving into one of your houses. Okay, come on over. Actually, just kidding. Wait till the pandemic's over. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Loofahs. That's one that I haven't ever grown, and I hear you can eat those as well. Yeah. Um, it did just deflate a little bit. Like, it. yeah, it deflated. It it was oh, like up here. It does. It does deflate a little bit because the air in the bottom starts to come out. Yours is gorgeous. You did such a great job. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Have you ever grown scallions? Yes. It's it's the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, I can't believe all the years I was throwing away the root end of the scallion. Now I just pop it into a shot glass with some water and I have fresh scallions all the time. I love it. It's like the best so little good. trick. Let's see. I wish I had some reduced balsamic, but I don't. I just have regular. I cheated and I bought the glaze just because I put it on so much stuff. It's so good. I know. I should have done that. Make good ones. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just going to carefully drizzle some. Okay. I'm looking through here. I look like I'm just staring into the void. I'm looking in here for questions if anybody else has any. I love this. You guys are so great. This is so fun. Hi, New Zealand. Yay, that's exciting. Yay. 
Yeah, eggs are a really crazy currency. I feel like I didn't realize that I had a good barter station going on. Um, oh, I was making <laughs> butter too, because we had a lot of milk from, from books. So I was trading bread and butter, homemade and pickles and um, fresh eggs. And I was like, yeah. I could survive in the olden days. This would be perfectly fine. I know it is. It's so fun. We had another neighbor who had more potatoes than he could use. So he brought us some potatoes and my standby is just always eggs. I'm like, here, yeah. have, some eggs, have some eggs, you know, yeah. but it is so fun. Oh, I love this. Oh, this is so awesome. And I hear <laughs> my kiddo is getting wild in the back there. I think he's ready for some bacon. He smells the bacon. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! This was so fun. I'm, I'm so excited I made this. Now I have dinner done. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank you, Shannon, for coming. And I say we do this again. So anybody who wants Shannon to come back, leave me a comment down below. Um, but again. every two so yeah. at three o'clock and go follow Shannon at Urban Farm, Farm Food. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for great. having me. Right it was so fun. Thank you. And um, thanks for your recipe. I yeah, love no it. Problem. Bye. Bye.